Hey guys, Mike with Motivate Fabrication. Look at that. It's coming along. I sure hope it looks different. Um, got the headstock on. One coat of paint. We're not going to bolt it down yet. But uh, I've been working on getting this uh, input clutch area uh, fixed. I don't know if I mentioned, I think I mentioned in a previous video, three bolt holes holding this housing on were stripped out. So I bought these called Easy Lock. Um, it's 5 8 thread on the outside, 7 16 on the inside, which is the, the bolt thread. And uh, drilled them out, threaded them in, using a big flat blade screwdriver and that's uh, like a Loctite on the outside. So uh, got that fixed, everything should be good. Also got this uh, sliding engagement gear that engages the reversing lead screw mechanism. It's all cleaned up. So I still need to uh, put one more coat on the headstock and then uh, I'm going to, on this video, uh, start assembling this uh, clutch, main clutch area. So well, let's get to it. So this housing here, I wire brushed and cleaned up. paint this prior to paint it after I have it installed. And these are the three bolts, seven sixteenths. You know what? I think I'm forgetting something. Getting ahead of myself here. Bring in closer. I don't know if this is necessary or not. I know this is this is kind of the little mechanical. I don't know what they call that, but it keeps the oil. There's no seal in here, but it keeps the the way there's this cavity. It keeps oil from coming out. But I'm wondering if I should put a little bit of a um, form in place gasket around there. I don't think it'll hurt anything, but just a real light coat of it. I don't want to have to take this off because it's leaking between there. I really don't like to get too crazy here with this stuff. Just real. Thin skim, otherwise it just looks real unprofessional. And like I said, I'm not even sure if this is actually necessary or not, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case.
right. Get you a good look at that here. So uh, one thing I, my other machine doesn't have this, but there's a grease cert here and it comes out there. So pretty sure that's, it's not for that, because that goes all the way on. It's probably for these uh, bearings inside the, the pulley. They don't, must not use, must be non-sealed bearing. It was, you know, I think it was probably built before they used uh, fully rubber lip sealed bearings. I suspect you could do away with that if you change the bearings to a, you know, a fully sealed bearing, but I'll take a look at those bearings and see, uh, see what they look like. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint this and give that another coat and um, then work on cleaning up the parts, more of the parts for this clutch. I did find, where is it at? Ah, the clutch fork that goes in here, sits up in here like that. Uh, someone brazed it back together. Didn't get it aligned too good. But, you know, I banged on it and put a bunch of pressure on it, and it seems to be stuck together pretty good, so I think I'm going to leave it for now. It's not something you can really see anyway once it's installed. Not, I wouldn't be too proud of that brazing job, but hey, for now... I don't see a lot of reason to, you can see how it's misaligned. There's a decent amount of slop and that comes down to a, a rod. So I don't think that slight of mis, a little bit of misalignment's gonna matter much, but my other machine, it had a bunch of parts that I ended up having to braze back together. So I love cast iron for the weight, but it kind of sucks. It doesn't bend, it breaks, or at least not regular cast iron. So, um, here's a look under here at the reversing fork. That's the, so this fork up in here that moves that reversing mechanism back and forth. Um, this is like a detent. It's a spring loaded and it pops up over those teeth when you move it back and forth. That's what holds it in each position. So you can adjust the tension on that little plunger in there to uh, make it either harder or easier to shift from one position to another. But um, progress is slow, but it's coming along. Just like probably all you guys watching, it was really freaking cold here for a long time but i do have a heated and insulated shop but even at uh you know negative 10 overnight and zero through the day for a couple days it takes a lot of heat to keep this place reasonable temperature so i didn't really come out here too much but um there it is for now it's a short video I'll get some more stuff out here as I have some time. I know uh, I'm not getting them out near as often as I was, but uh, cold weather made work pick up big time. So I just gotta do it when I get time. But thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.